Hello, my name's Stuart, and I'm going to give you an introduction to the Video Hub Router Control Protocol. Now, on the desk in front of me, I've got the Smart Video Hub Clean Switch 12x12, and that means it has 12 inputs and 12 outputs, SDI inputs and SDI outputs, and it connects routes between the inputs to the outputs. In other situations, you might need more than uh, 12 inputs and, uh, and 12 outputs. So here's an image of the Video Hub 20 by 20. There's the Smart Video Hub 40 by 40. And if that's not enough, we've even got the Universal Video Hub that has 288 inputs and 288 outputs. So what does a Video Hub actually do? It makes connections between inputs and outputs. And I like to think of it as uh, a wire. So you've got from your SDI input, you're making a, a wire co connection to the SDI output. And in this diagram, we've got uh, a very simple table where every input is connected to its corresponding output. If we make a change to the Video Hub routes, so like this, we've now got input one going to outputs one, two, and three. So one thing to remember is for the outputs, they always must be connected to some input but an input doesn't necessarily need to be connected to an output. So let's get into the details of the control protocol. So it's a network, a TCP network protocol where the video hub is the server and it listens on port 9990. It's a text-based protocol, so that makes it easy to uh, understand the protocol, to debug your applications, and you can use uh, applications like Telnet or Putty on Windows, and uh, common scripting languages can be used as well. So looking at the protocol itself, it consists of what we call the command block format. So that's where you have uh, a command name or block name, followed by a colon, then a list of parameters, which are the values you want to change, and then you terminate that with an empty line. When that's sent to the Video Hub server, it will respond immediately with an ACK, or if there's a mistake in the syntax of your command block, it'll respond with a NACK. Then once it's been applied in the device, you'll get a status update, which has the same format as the command block. So it's the, it's the block name that you changed, and then the list of values that you changed. So here's a, an example of changing the routes for three outputs. Now, on the video hub in front of me, the inputs are labeled 1 to 12, and the outputs labeled 1 to 12. But in the protocol format, because the computers like to start counting from 0, they're numbered from 0. So 0 in the protocol corresponds with 1 uh, on the device. In this example, we're changing three outputs, 0, 1, and 2, and they're being connected to output 0. So I'm going to go over to my terminal and connect to the video hub. I'm using Netcat here because uh, on this version of MacOS, uh, Telnet isn't available. Now on the initial connection, I'm just going to scroll up to the start of that. We get to see the current state of the device. So it's running protocol version 2.8. It's a smart video hub clean switch 12 by 12. It gives us information about the inputs and outputs. And this is very useful. If you're going to run an, uh, an application that controls different models of Video Hub, you can use that information to parameterize your application so it knows how many inputs and outputs it's dealing with. There's some more information that you can configure input labels, output labels, locks. But the most important part we want to see is the video output routing table. So I'm also showing the Video Hub control application where you can change routes with a click. And you see those routes change on the, the terminal. The server is sending those, serv sending those status changes back. So I'm going to go ahead and, and change one here. So if I enter Video Hub Output Routing, that's my command block name. And then I'm going to change Output 0 to, go to get its input from input 0. Output 1 is connected also to input 0, output 2, input 0. I terminate that with an empty line, and you should see the route change on the control application. 
You can also change uh, labels and locks. This might be very useful if you need to configure uh, your, um, your setup your, um, remotely. So input label, at the moment it's called Hyperdeck 1. I'm going to change that to Studio 5. Um, I forgot to put the output that I'm going to, ch the input number I'm going to change. I'm going to change input 0 to Studio 5. Terminate with an empty line, and it should give me an ACK, which it did. And then it also responds with the configuration that I changed. And now in the application, we can see I've changed that to Studio 5. Locks can be changed similarly. So I enter that command block name, and I'm going to lock output 1, so with a L for lock an empty line, and now over here we see a lock icon. I can also take that off because I want to change that later on, so let's change that back to unlocked. If we want to get the current state, let's say your script or application isn't tracking changes, you can just enter an empty command block name and you get the full state of that. If you want to see the video output routing table, we'll enter that and empty. This is just an empty command, and you'll get the full routing table. So let's look at some common applications that uh, customers like to use. And the first one I'm going to demonstrate is what we would call uh, presets. So this is where you've got um, a studio set up being used by different production teams. In the morning you come in and the routes have all been changed differently. Where you want to get your inputs from your hyperdex, you want to set up the monitors a certain way, and uh, you want to do that uh, without making the same mistakes every day. So actually something that customers do is they simply have a text file and they will highlight the, the the routing table that they saved from the text file, they'll connect to their video hub and then they'll paste it in and apply it like that. That can be a little bit error prone if you uh, accidentally paste it the wrong way um, or don't swipe the, the full body of text. So you can have a script and here I've got a uh, in the wrong directory. Give me a moment. So here I've got a Python script to, to do exactly that. I'll just run through what it does. I'm going to use Telnet lib and system modules. Uh, I've got my Video Hub IP address. It's always on port 9990. So this line here connects to the Video Hub. I read until I get the end prelude. So if you remember when I first connected to it, we got this uh, large body of text, which is the current state of the video hub. And so what I do is I keep reading until I get N prelude. That makes sure that I've consumed all the data that the video hub server is sending over Telnet to my client. I've consumed all that so that I can then send commands to it. So after reading until N prelude, I then write video output routing. Now, it's not case sensitive. In this case, I prefer to use lowercase. You can use uppercase or lowercase. And this is the table change that we're going to, to, to do. So let's, uh, I'm just going to change the routing table here so we can see the change when I run the script. And here we go, Python presets. And when I run this, we should see a change occur. OK, we saw a change, but it wasn't very obvious because I'd already set it up. So let's run that again. Now we should see output one be connected to input two. There we go. So a very common application that people do the first thing when they get into a studio. Another common application that we've seen a number of uh, customers use is what you might call the um, CCTV application. So this is where you have a number of cameras set up and you want to cycle bet between the cameras every few seconds. So it's a very similar, very similar script. 
it connects in the same way, it reads until end prelude, but in this case there's a, a forever loop, so this while true will loop forever, and then every second it will change the video output routing table for output zero, and it'll change it to whatever this number is. So this number will cycle between zero and six. And let's run that, see how that works. Python. And so now you can see on the control application, it's cycling through the first seven inputs. And every one second is probably too quick for a, a typical application. But uh, that's reasonably common that a reasonably common application that customers use. Now another type of application is something where you don't want to control the routes of the video hub, but you want to get the, the status update. You want to do something when something else changes the video hub. Because it's a network protocol, it means you can have multiple clients. So you might have uh, one client connecting with the, uh, a, the the control application or a smart video hub physical button panel. Uh, and you might have another application that connects to it and gets and does some other action based on changes to the routing table. And so that's the uh, tally one here. I'll just uh, show that file. And every what this one does is it connects, again, it connects to the video hub, waits till it gets to the end of the prelude. And instead of sending anything to the video hub, it listens for changes. And I'm using a regular expression here to look for changes to the video output routing command. I'm looking for anything following that. The double new line terminates that command block. So what if I use the application to change, change it, we'll see that come through. And I'm going to be pulling out the destination and the source the output and the input, and if the input for destination zero changes to three, I'm going to print turn on tally. Now, if you're running on a Raspberry Pi or an Arduino, you might want to um, turn on a, a physical tally light. So in the comment there, I've got GPIO output five, turn it high. Here, I don't have any physical buttons connected to the Mac, so I'm just going to print. So let's run that. And nothing's happening because I haven't changed any routes. But if I go ahead and change the route to, uh, say, 1, it'll say turn off tally. If I connect to source 3, remember, in the protocol, it counts from 0. So on the control application, that will be 4. Then it will turn on the tally. So again, very simple application to demonstrate how you can have something that does, does some important action based on changes to the video hub state. Now, another common use case that uh, people like to do is they like physical buttons. They don't like to run scripts on laptops um, or desktops that may not be convenient to them. So in a studio, they will have uh, an Arduino. And here I've got an Arduino mainboard here, an Ethernet shield, and uh, a little breakout shield where I've soldered some buttons on. So every time I press a button, it's sending a different video hub route to the video hub. If we look at uh, the code for that, we've got some setup to connect to the Ethernet um, shield. I'm setting the pin modes for my buttons and my LEDs. And then the main part of the loop is to connect to the video hub and basically wait for buttons. So if a button is pressed, so if I press button one, then it'll send a particular video hub output routing command block. And I could have, um, this could be as complex as I liked. Here I'm just changing uh, one input to one destination. If I press a different button, I'll get a different output change. Now, one thing to remember on your Arduino shield is there are 
four pins used up by the communication between the uh, Ethernet shield and the Arduino main board. So in the diagram there, I've uh, highlighted those in color. The blue pin is my, my button. So just be aware that uh, your pin count is reduced a bit when you're connecting the number of buttons. So that will reduce the number of pins that you have available. I've actually doubled up things here because I have three buttons and each button has its own LED. So that's uh, six pins I've used up there. So if you'd like more information, you can go to the Blackmagic Design Developer website. We've also got a software development forum. Thank you for watching.